Here we go. Okay. So uh, chapter 10, some of the stuff in chapter 10 is going to be a little bit of a repeat. Yay, at this point, right? You've gotten so much new information. It's kind of nice to, to get a little bit of a repeat. So we're going to have some stuff that's going to be a little bit of a repeat and then uh, some new stuff. So what's a current liability? We had talked about this uh, quite a while ago, so long ago, I think it was chapter two. Uh, so it's been a long time. <laughs> Um, so it is a debt that the company is going to pay either um, within the or the next operating cycle, whichever is longer. And in this class, we are not looking at operating cycles, so it's going to be within the next year. Uh, current liabilities, you might have things such as notes payable, accounts payable, unearned revenues, accrued liabilities, um, taxes, salaries, and wages payable, um, interest payable, things of that, that nature. So um, let's see, to be classified as a current liability, a debt must be expected to be paid and it's A or B within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. So it's actually D, D's answer. Okay, so um, Notes payable and accounts payable differ in a main way. So accounts payable, with accounts payable, if you were a company and you were a bread maker and you needed flour to make your bread, you would go, uh, you would go to the flour mill and you would say, hey, I'm a bread maker. I need to um, open up an account. So you would apply for an account and they would approve you for account. And then you would be able to buy bread um, as you, or you would be able to buy flour as you needed to make bread. And what would happen is that you would, you would buy flour and then you would pay your bill and buy flour and pay your bill and you'd be able to buy flour up to a certain dollar amount. And as long as you stayed within your credit limit and paid your bill on time, you'd be able to continue to buy flour. Now, a note is different because a note is negotiated every single time you make a purchase. So every single time you buy a car on credit, you have to negotiate a new note. Every single time you buy a home on credit, you have to buy, you have to negotiate a new note. So it's something that is, um, it's a very specific and um, one off um, item that happens. So that's how notes are different than accounts payable in that sense. Um, okay, so this is a repeat piece here. Uh, an example of doing the accounting when a note is issued. So First National Bank agrees to lend $100,000 on September 1, 2022, if Cole Williams signs a $100,000 12% four-month note maturing on January 1. When a company issues an interest-bearing note, the amount of the asset it receives generally equals the note's face value. And that's what you're gonna see here, okay? So um, you're going to debit cash $100,000. And you're going to credit notes payable $100,000. So we're getting $100,000 cash. This would be like a loan from a bank. And we need to pay $100,000 back when that note comes due. So you've already done this before. This, this should be something that looks, uh, looks somewhat familiar to you. Um, if Cole Williams prepares financial statements annually, it makes an adjusting entry December 31 to recognize interest. So this is where uh, we go back to something very similar to what we did in um, the chapter where we looked at notes receivable, right? So now at that point, we were receiving the money. Now we're notes payable, we're paying the money. But the formula to figure out the interest is the same. So... The formula is principal times rate times time, okay? Or what they call face value times rate times time. So the first thing you ask yourself when you go to do the entry is, is the interest current? And if it doesn't say when the last time interest was done, you assume it's never been done, all right? So then you go from the date it was last done to the date that you're doing the interest. So in this case, it was issued, the note was issued, we have to go back to the last slide actually. The note was issued on September 1, okay? The note was issued on September 1. So we're doing the entry on December 31. So it's all of September, all of October, all of November and all of December. So that's four months, all right? So this is where we have the principal is $100,000 
times the annual percentage rate, which is 12% or the rate times something over 12 because it was a month note, right? So it's four over 12. So that tells us the interest for those four months was $4,000. So then we're gonna do the entry, the um, adjusting entry for the interest. So we're gonna debit interest expense, $4,000. And we're gonna credit interest payable, $4,000. Okay, so that should all be somewhat familiar to you. So let's go to the next slide. All right. So at maturity, January 1, Cole Williams Company must pay the face value of the note plus interest. It records the payment as follows. So remember, the first thing you do when you're making a payment is you ask yourself, is the interest current? Is the interest current? So the last time the interest was done on this problem was December 31. We just did it, right? Now we're making the payment on January 1. Is there any gap in time? No, there's no gap in time. You go from December 31 right to January 1. So the interest is current, okay? So since the interest is current, uh, the first thing you're gonna do in the entry is you're gonna debit notes payable $100,000 to get rid of that note. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna debit interest payable $4,000 to clear out the interest. And then you're gonna credit cash $104,000 because that's how much cash you're actually paying for the note, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stop the recording there.